Hello again, we're going to do another quick tip today, another fusion tip, um, very similar to, well, closely related to our previous fusion tip, uh, which was all about embedding live metadata from your CAD into your models um, so that during rapid prototyping you can see things like tolerances, version numbers, etc. on your part without having to manually update all that data. Uh, today's video is going to be about making that text legible at small sizes. Um, if you're prototyping small things, getting text to print on it reasonably can be quite difficult. Now we're gonna be specifically talking about uh, what I guess would be called debossed text, meaning a text on the surface. But you can use the same technique to get um, uh, results for embossed text. Uh, the only thing is, is you're going to be looking at the inverse of what we're talking about here today. So rather than looking at the widths of individual um, character strokes, you're going to be looking at the space in you know, the negative space of the character. And we're doing that because it's faster for printing. If you're just looking for metadata or something, you can just add an extra layer uh, or a couple of layers if your part can take that. Um, if it can't, you will have to go with the embossed version, but uh, the embossed version um, will almost always not print as well as the debossed version. And the embossed version um, will need to be printed at a slightly bigger size in order to get results. If you want maximally small text, it pretty much has to be debossed. It has to be printed on the surface. So first and foremost, uh, font selection. Uh, the default here is Arial, and that's what I'm gonna use uh, for this. Um, you're not limited to Arial by any stretch. Uh, really what you're looking for is um, what in graphic design and web design, um, and uh, font design, I should say, um, would be called a monoline font. Uh, monoline fonts effectively have a single stroke width through the entire letter. So if you look at this S here, it's more or less the same uh, width. This is not a true monoline font. It's just something that's already on everybody's system, so it's pretty easy. I don't know if there's something that's available on everything um, that's a true monoline, but if you want a real monoline font, you can just go to any font browser and search uh, monoline. And you'll get a ton of examples of monoline fonts. A lot are more scripty than others. Some are very blocky. Um, there's one here that I've used uh, with a good success in the past called Baldwin. Um, this is uh, free for personal use, or it's only like, yeah, it's a buck 20 to, to purchase a license for. Um, I'm not going to use that just because I want you to be able to jump right into this. But if there is a specific font that matches your use case better than another, go ahead and use it. What you want to avoid and what you want to look for is you want to avoid serifs. So if we were looking at something like times, you want to avoid all these little flippy doos on the end of your lines. Uh, and you also want to avoid anything with this stroke variance, um, where it gets thicker and thinner throughout the course of the letter. That's why we're looking for monoline fonts. Also, you want to prefer bolder fonts. Um, the crux of what we're about to do um, is we're going to tune the font sizes so uh, they're drawn more or less the way we would draw them uh, with a pencil, but we're going to be doing this with the extruder, meaning we ideally want our extruder at these tiny, tiny sizes to... Um, print a single stroke through the entire letter just like it were writing it. And with a font like this, you're going to end up getting an outline that's going to have to go back and fill all of this, and then it's going to go in and have to uh, fill little triangles and gaps and stuff like that. And uh, there simply is no room for that when we're talking about two millimeter text, three millimeter text, um, you know, etc. We'll probably go for, we'll probably aim for a sweet spot around 3.5. That's where results start getting pretty consistent without having to tune your machine. Um, but you can, you know, fiddle with it a little bit. Um, so like I said, we're just going to use um, Arial uh, because it is reasonably monotype or uh, monoline. For our purposes, uh, we are going to check bold here because again, bolder is better. The thicker the font stroke is in relation to your font size, the better results you're going to have because remember, this is going to become the nozzle. Uh, we're we're, we're going to tune this so that it's almost exactly the nozzle width. And there's some variance whether or not you use your nozzle dimension um, or your actual extrusion width. Uh, for instance, uh, most printers will have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but the extrusion width will actually be like 0.45, uh, depending on how you have your printer tuned. Just the stock default profile I'm using on my Prusa, it's 0.45. 
Um, what I usually recommend is if we're gonna go for a single stroke, and this will make more sense as we go along, if we're gonna go for a single stroke per letter, then I use the extrusion width. So in this case, 0.45. If I'm gonna go for multiples, like you know, if I'm gonna try and draw each letter with two or more strokes, then I usually will bump it down a little bit and use the nozzle diameter instead of the extrusion width because it's less likely to show any gap between those layers. But let's actually get some um, some progress here. So first off, I'm just going to center these horizontally and vertically, and I've just got this anchored to here. Uh, this size right now doesn't matter, so we can go ahead and leave this at 10 millimeter. Uh, it's really not important. But what is important is we're going to do a temporary extrusion of this. So we'll call it uh, one millimeter. It really doesn't matter. Oops. There we go. And we're going to need to measure this. I'm going to measure this eye here just because it's big and rectangular. And you see this value here. This is this is showing us our current width of um, this font, uh, or of this eye letter uh, specifically. So 2.19. Uh, sorry, 2.019. Uh, and that's in millimeter. So what we need to do is figure out um, the multiplier to get that down to um, our ideal width, which again, uh, for starting off, we're gonna use the extrusion width, which you can find in your um, slicer. Uh, it'll be different for every slicer, but um, on mine, it is under advanced in print settings. You can look up here for your default extrusion width, and that should give you what you need to know. Uh, that or again, your nozzle diameter, which is probably 0.4, but some printers are coming with like 0.6 millimeter nozzles now. Um, it'll be different for your use case. What we're going to talk about is all about tuning the CAD. It is not about tuning your printer. Um, that's going to be different for your printer, your use case, your filament, uh, etc. You will, of course, get the best results with a clean nozzle, with a well-tuned printer, with well-dried filament, etc. But for the purposes of this example, I'm just using a stock printer profile, 0.2 uh, structural uh, in Prusa Slicer. Uh, and I'm using a random roll of PETG off the stack. It's not been dried. Um, nothing has been tuned. This is as bone stock an experience uh, as I can give you uh, for these examples. But let's go into the actual tuning here. So we've got our monoline font with no serifs. Uh, we've got it as you know bolded because uh, that'll give us better results. Uh, and we've got our uh, width here. So 2.019. So let's go in and create a couple of parameters. Let's use our, let's create one called nozzle diameter, and that is 0.4. Probably use that. We'll create one called extrusion width, uh, and that is 0.45. Default font width sure um, and that was 2.019 then we'll create one for a multiplier uh, the multiplier will be used to derive different sizes once we get our base size uh, so for now it's just going to be one but we can change this later and then we're going to create one called uh, font size And what this font size is going to represent is a, a multiplier. So first we need um, our target dimension. So first off, we're gonna go for our smallest size. Uh, now technically we can go lower than this. A 0.4 millimeter nozzle does have the ability to print in kind of a range. It can sort of under or over extrude uh, anywhere between like 0.3 and up to like maybe even 0.6. I can tell you that if you try and go down to 0.3, you're gonna get fonts or you're gonna get text that's so small that no FDM printer is going to be able to read it. I will show you what that looks like. like I'll print one and I'll roll it in here. At that size, it's useless. Even at our theoretical minimum, it's gonna be on the edge of readable. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and create our actual font size. So we're gonna derive that from these other values. So we'll take our um, our target width, which in this case is gonna be our extrusion width because uh, we're going for a single path. Again, if we were going for multiple paths, uh, we I would probably uh, opt to go with the nozzle diameter as opposed to the extrusion width. We're going to divide that by the value we actually got off of that I character, that top value, which was um, what we called the default stroke width. 
and then we're going to multiply that by our base font size, which in this case was 10. That was from our font browser. It just defaults to a font size of 10 pixels. Um, and then we're going to multiply that by our multiplier. And that's going to give us a value of 2.229, or what again we have stored in this variable called font, font size. So now, if we close this, go back into our sketch, we can edit this and switch it to font size. And now, when we go in and look at this extrusion, you should see it's right at 0.45 on the dot. Now the advantage to this is uh, it will print in a single path. So if we were to um, put this into our slicer, we're just going to pretty this up really quick. <clears throat> All right, now uh, what you're going to see when we actually import this into our slicer is that we're not going to get any kind of filling gaps um, or variance in how it draws these. It's going to write them exactly like we would if we were doing this with a pencil uh, when we slice this. There we go. And here you have kind of the, the your smallest base font. Um, this is about as uh, realistically as small as you can get this to print. Um, and still be fairly readable. You can technically go smaller, but you're gonna really start noticing um, anything wrong with your print setup. Stringing, dirty nozzle, um, poorly tuned machine, worn bearings, etc. They really start mattering um, at this kind of scale. And I know this probably looks big, but remember this is zoomed way in. This is more like that in real life, right? Uh, these individual letters um, here are only two and a quarter, less than two and a quarter millimeters tall. So we're still well under um, an eighth of an inch. This is what, like three thirty seconds ish. So uh, this is tiny, the very tiny text. And again, I'll, I will roll in an actual print of this. But now that we have this, we can use that multiplier um, to get a few different font sizes. So uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make a version. Change our multiplier to 1.5. And then we can slice that. Ooh, okay, so here is a prime example of where we'd want to switch to our nozzle diameter instead of um, the extrusion width. Do you see how some of these, and this is uh, largely um, because of uh, the font not being a true monoline font. Each one of these strokes is not technically the exact same width. So in some cases, it's choosing to do two strokes under un, under extruded, and in some cases, it's choosing to do one stroke over extruded, and we don't want it to do that. Uh, we want it to do what we want it to do, which is to stick with a single uh, stroke, ideally. Uh, so let's go back to Fusion, and let's change our formula to use, instead of the extrusion width, we will go with the nozzle. There we go, we're gonna end up with a slightly smaller text, um, which again, if we're going for small, that's, that's better. There we go. So, <clears throat> now instead of getting these double lines here, um, you know, which there's nothing technically wrong with a double line, but you kind of want to avoid the double line when it's too far of an under or over extrusion because the, the quality is going to shift between each of these. So you're going to get um, a different type of letter on the S than you are on the U, and it's going to look a little bit janky. So in this case, uh, we have um, the, the slicer sort of taking care of the fact that it's, it knows it's going to over extrude these just a little bit to get this size. We're gonna go ahead and delete that one. And then let's do one, I think we can probably get um, two inside of here, um, uh, you know, a two X multiplier. That's two, yeah. So that still fits nicely inside of a, uh, a six millimeter or about a quarter inch space. Um, and this is gonna be uh, quite clean. Um, I think this will print really, really well. So that 1.5 is, you know, that's pretty good, honestly. Like it, it's, qu it's quite legible um, and you can get it better, as, like I said, with a clean nozzle, dry filament, yada, yada, yada. Uh, this size will print pretty much on anything, uh, provided your printer's, you know, tuned at all.
Um, so let's go ahead and throw this into our print utility. Because we're going with uh, double uh, the multiplier, multiplier of two, we should see exactly two strokes for every single letter. And we do. And so you can see here, um, this is giving us our, our best chance for clean text. Now, if you have stringy filament or bad retraction settings or uh, over or under extrusion, etc., cetera, um, this isn't going to help you there. But if your printer's working at all, you're gonna be able to get really clean looking text at pretty much um, you know any size you want just by sort of knowing how to tune it and uh, pick a good uh, font or know, knowing how to tune the cat itself and then picking a good font. This is about as best case scenario as you can get and I'll, I'll roll in a quick picture of these all side by side and remember this is not tuned at all beyond the CAD. This is a stock printer profile. Um, this is it's not even a particularly fine one it's just the, it's the point two structural in Prusa Slicer uh, and this is a random roll of not dried uh, PETG with a dirty nozzle. Um, so uh, take a look at these really quick and you can kind of see the difference. And what you can see here is all of those examples. So we have a, on the top here, if I can get this to focus, um, that is the theoretical maximum. So that's actually under extruding. That's a 0.3 uh, millimeter um, uh, you know, under extrusion, and that is completely unreadable. But as soon as we bump up to our nozzle diameter, suddenly we start getting something that's pretty legible. Uh, like you could, that's that's legible enough for a prototype. Um, the difference between um, the second and third here is just the difference between um, using the nozzle diameter uh, versus the extrusion width. So you can see with the extrusion width, that 0.45, get a little bit cleaner letters. That last E came out a little bit chowdery, not too bad. Then we get the 1.5 size. At 1.5, this is uh, printing pretty cleanly, so under an eighth of an inch. Uh, that E there has got a little bit of a bridge there, but that's um, uh, due to my filament being stringy, not uh, due to the technique. Uh, and then you can see at the double size, at a 2x multiplier, we start getting pretty clean looking text. Um, so pretty much any of the last three would be suitable for prototyping and probably these last two could maybe be used on an actual product. So hopefully that helps somebody out there and uh, well, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.